So what we're going to look at today is binary logistic regression. We have to keep in mind that sometimes the output of a process that we're analyzing is measured in attribute data or discrete data, uh, which means it could be in the form of pass, fail, or it could be in the form of uh, yes or no, or OK or defective. Now this requires a completely different regression approach. We call it logistic regression. And I'm going to show you how to do that in Minitab. So the first thing we do is we go and take a look at our data in Microsoft Excel. Our data, as is laid out in these columns, will need to be cleaned up before we can put it into Minitab. You will notice in these columns of data that I have only discrete variables available. Now among these discrete variables, there are some that match other columns exactly. And there are also some in which there is no change at all. So if you were to take a look at this final status column that I have here, this column is my response variable. All the columns behind this are the input variables. So if I count, I have vendor data accuracy 1, sufficient resources 2, verified status 3, data quality checks 4, vendor bias 5, data entry and collection by sales 6, customer info given 7. I have 7 input variables. Do all of these input variables need to be included in my regression analysis? Maybe and maybe not. Which ones may I possibly remove. One of the things that I will notice immediately is that vendor bias, which is column D here, and vendor data accuracy, which is column H here, the input values are exactly the same. So wherever I have defective in column D, I also have defective in column H. Whenever I have OK in column D, I also have OK in column H. And I will have to make sure by scrolling down to confirm that these two columns are exactly the same. And once I've confirmed, I will only use one of these two variables. Because if I use the two variables together, that's covariance and it will affect the way my regression analysis is done. In fact, MeTab will not even allow it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this column from here. Similarly, I have another column which is column G, and this is sufficient resources. One of the things that I'm noticing about this column is that all the input values are OK there is no difference whatsoever. Since this input variable is not changing at all, it makes no sense to include it in a regression analysis, which is all about comparing how input variables change and their impact on the output variable might be. So this is another column which is not needed. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this as well. I'm left with five out of the seven columns and with these we are ready to paste our data in Minitab. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my data from Excel. I'm going to copy my data and paste it in Minitab. I'd like to remind you that our output variable or response variable was final status which is this one right here. Now, in Minitab, we click on Stat, and under Stat, the menu that opens up has the second option as Regression, so we click on Regression, another menu opens up on the right-hand side, we scroll down until we come to Logistic Regression. Now, there are three options available here, Binary, Ordinal, and Nominal. We will pick Binary because the input and output values that we have here are all binary. They're OK or defective. There are only two options, which means it's binary logistic regression. So we click on that, and the window opens up. I had already filled this in earlier, so I'm just going to show you how I did it. Under response, 
we'll pick final status because this is our response variable here is the model area now the model area is where you put in all the input variables so we're going to select the five input variables we have from C1 to C5 and click on select so they show up in the model area similarly in the factors area we will have to put in all the discrete or attribute variables. You know, sometimes when you're running binary logistic regression, some of the input variables are continuous, whereas some others are discrete or attribute. So in this case, under the factors area, we will put in all the discrete variables. And because in this case, all the input variables are discrete, we'll have to put all of them in here. So we'll go ahead and select them. And paste them here. So it says custom info given hyphen verify status. All the input variables are included here. On the bottom right hand side you will see these four buttons. You will have to click on three of them to make adjustments. The first one is graphs. When you click on graphs it will show you eight options. Four under involving event probability and four under involving leverage. So under involving event probability I want you to click on delta chi-square probability this is one of the graphs we'd like to look at similarly under involving leverage I'd like you to pick delta chi-square versus leverage having clicked on these you will click OK and then you'll go on to results and under results you want to make sure that the third radio button which is in addition three goodness of fit tests table of observed and expected frequencies and measures of association this option will give us a nice summary of the regression analysis we'll click OK here and the third one is options so you click on options and this is where you specify your reference points in each input variable so each factor which is binary in this case you have either OK or you have defective. Minitab will take one of them as a reference value. By default it will take alphabetically the last value as a reference value. So between OK and defective OK starts with O whereas defective starts with D. Since the last value here in this in this case is OK the reference point will become OK. If we had wanted to change that, we would put in the reference factor, for example, custom info given, space, use inverted commas, in which you will put in defective and close the inverted commas. And this will tell Minitab that you would rather use defective as the reference value for this particular factor instead of OK. Since we don't want that, I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. So no changes here. Just click OK. And now you are ready to run your log binary logistic regression. Click OK. And Minitab will do a little dance. In the session window, you'll see some of the analysis showing up. And the two graphs that you had asked Minitab to create are created. How we analyze this is go to the session window with me. We'll expand it so that uh, you can see it properly. So in the session window, scroll up to the point where it starts. Main tab has summarized your OK and defective values. You have 104 events that were OK. 15 that were defective in your response variable final status. Notice that the total is 119 where there was one case containing missing values. Apparently we had left a record in there with no response value. So Meetab just kind of excluded that. Below that you will find a logistic regression table. In this logistic regression table we're going to look at three types of values. So I want to point your attention to the coefficient. The coefficient for each value for each input variable is provided here in the uh, in the regression equation uh, 
and you will notice that they're all positive. So the positive in this case means that whenever this input changes from OK to defective, the response value also changes from OK to defective. Now, had it been negative, or any one of them had been negative, that would have meant that when that particular variable changes from OK to defective, the response changes from defective to OK. Similarly, we're going to look at the p-value. And as we understand from p-values, it's the probability of making a mistake if you do not reject this particular variable as unnecessary. So that means we're going to be looking at low probabilities. And the only one with a probability of less than 0 0.05 here is this variable right here, which is vendor bias. The rest of them all seem to be above uh, 0 0.05, which means those can probably be removed from our model at this point. Uh, we can move on from this regression analysis with only vendor bias as the key factor. The third column that we would look at is the odds ratio. The odds ratio looks at all other things being equal. The odds of you getting a certain output value given that there is a certain input value in this particular factor, those are the odds that it calculates. The fourth area that we would look at, if you scroll down with me a little bit, is the goodness of fit tests, which are up here. This shows us how good or not so good our, our regression model is. And then that means the model is worth using. However, if the p-values are below 0 0.05, that means we have included factors in our model which are not helping. And you will notice that all these p-values are from all the different um, ways that p-values are calculated, they're all zero. Which means our current model, with all of the five factors that we had included in there, is not worth using. And we've already shown that to be the case when we looked at the p-values of several factors. We noticed that only one of them is significant. Let's stop here for a minute and take a look at the graphs that uh, we had drawn. So we'll first look at the delta chi-square versus leverage graph. These graphs help us get an idea of how well our model places the input records. You'll notice that one of these is sort of sticking out. If you click on it, you will be able to identify which specific row this record comes from. This is row 3. Row 3, the value in low, row 3 does not fit the rest of our model. Worth considering, worth analyzing further. Go to the second graph, which is delta chi-square versus p. You click on the outlier here once again. It happens to be row 3 yet again. So row 3 is something that we ought to analyze further. Let's go back and click on row 3. We notice that row 3 the row 3 shows us the first, second, and third columns are all showing OK, whereas the final status is defective. This is not in line with the rest of the data values. That's basically what this analysis shows us. So as a summary from the regression analysis, the binary logistic regression analysis that we ran, we conclude that the current model with the five variables, five input factors included, is not suitable. And we will need to remove all of the input variables except for vendor bias, which shows itself to be a more true determinant of the output values in the final status. This is the critical X, so to speak. So that's all about binary logistic regression. We'll be back with more.